Smart snowblower owners do this. Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear, I'm JB. Now if you have a newer snowblower or an older snowblower, here's a step you don't wanna skip. Lubricating the drive axles. Now in most cases, on most snowblowers, you're gonna have to take the wheels off in order to do some maintenance procedures along the way. And if the wheels are seized onto the drive axles, you are about to have a very, very bad day. The first thing we need to do is we need to get this snowblower up off the ground. We're gonna tip this snowblower up into the service position in order to help us get the wheels off easier. But before we do that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that depending on where your gas cap is, that there's little to no gas in the tank. This way, when you tip it over, there's no gas leaking out. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that your oil cap is on tight to prevent any oil from leaking out as well. Now from here, your pins may vary, but we're gonna pull the pins off of each wheel. Pry those right out, out it comes. Same thing on this side, we're gonna pull it out. Off it comes. Now from here, we're just gonna slide each wheel right off. And out comes the keyway. This is an important piece. It sits right here on the drive shaft, so that way the wheel has something to grab as it spins. Make sure it goes back in the same spot. For now, we're just gonna keep it off to the side. Be sure not to lose that keyway, and to help this video not lose with the YouTube algorithm, would you mind taking a super quick second to hit that like button? Thank you. Same thing here on this side. We're gonna watch for that keyway to fall out. Set it down, and there's our keyway. So now on most snowblowers, this is what you're gonna be looking at. And if you have a bushing like this, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and slide this off. This is a drive shaft or drive axle. This is what eventually rusts and seizes and locks itself onto the wheel, making it very difficult to take the wheel off. So you wanna coat this with some kind of grease or even better, anti-seize. Now from here, it's really quite simple. We're gonna take some anti-seize and we're gonna coat this bad boy. Warning, anti-seize is extremely messy stuff. I already got it on my gloves. It's already on my camera. You have been warned. We're just gonna mix it up really good. Oh yeah, mix it up, man. And then we're just gonna simply paint it on, just like that. Get it in there, cover the whole darn thing. You can be pretty generous with this. It's not gonna hurt anything, it's only gonna help everything. Get right up around this bushing here, get some in this keyway slot, coat the whole thing. You don't wanna see any metal exposed. This is pretty quick, it only takes about a minute or two to do. And then what I'm gonna do is coat this end right here. Get it in that groove, that slot, cover it right up, perfect. I'm gonna slide back on my bushing here. You might get a little bit of a buildup on that, and that's okay, just like that. Now because that bushing took just a little bit off and kind of pressed it against the snowblower, now what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit more back on. You can be generous with this. Bam, 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 lay it on. I'm gonna take my keyway, I'm gonna stick that back in its slot. Kind of slides a little bit in there now. Take some more anti-seize. Coat that baby, that'll do. Now before you go ahead and pop your wheel back on, it's a good idea to spray this whole side panel down with some kind of protective coating. Fluid film makes a great protectant. Spray it all down, wipe it thin, and you're good to go. Now we're gonna carefully slide this wheel back on, lining up our keyway slot inside the wheel. We need to put a hand behind it and just simply push her into place. Perfect. From here, we're gonna slide our pin back into place. There we go. It's also a good idea to take some spray like fluid film and spray down that pin to protect it from rusting. You can also wipe that thin, as well as the wheel well. Now this side's all good to go. Let's have a look at the other side. Now if you have an errands with an auto turn system or maybe some other model with some kind of feature like it, you're gonna wanna pay attention to this. I already went a step ahead and unbolted this back panel. Right now I'm gonna take it off. Boy, that looks pretty in there. So similar to the other side, keyways out. We're gonna slide this bushing off. And then from here on the end, there's a little clip. We're gonna grab this with some pliers and pull it off. Come on, this time. There we go. As we follow this shaft inside, we can see that there's a washer or bushing inside. And then as we pull it out and look closer, you can see that there's some little grooves or teeth that line up with the mechanism that helps our auto turn. Now why we have to kind of do an extra step here is that because this shaft is actually two pieces. There's a tube that fits over a smaller shaft. So what we gotta do is make sure that we realign those teeth properly when we slide this tube back over the shaft. So I am going to pull this guy out carefully here. Carefully, carefully, slide it out. There we go, just like that. Now my concern is that this guy will seize onto this guy and make future repairs very difficult. So what we're gonna do is coat it twice. Grab the anti-seize, mix it up pretty good, and give it a quick coating. No need to be an artiste here, you just need to get it coated. Big question is, why doesn't Aaron's do this from the factory? Hmm, we're already paying thousands of dollars for these machines, Aaron's, and Good. Now what we're gonna do is slide our tube back on and we're gonna have to get it through that washer inside. So this could get a little tricky. You're just gonna have to play with it a little bit. Slide it on, feed it through. There we go. Washers around. Line up the teeth. We're good. Everything looks great here. Now we're just gonna reinsert our pin. 
Good, now's a good time if you wanna do any rust proofing to spray everything down and give it a quick wipe. Now I'm gonna come back in with my anti-seize and coat the top pipe. Get right up to the bushing, paint it all on. You can be pretty generous with this all the way around, get in that key slot, make sure you get underneath. You don't wanna see any exposed metal. And now I'm just gonna put some on this pin here so this doesn't rust on. We're gonna slide our bushing back into place, put our keyway back in its place, and then I'm gonna give it one more quick coating on top protect that keyway, another generous coating all around. I typically say thin winds, thick sticks, but in this case, you can't be too afraid of being generous here. Layer it on. From here, what I'm gonna do is reinstall the belly pan. And from here, we're just gonna slide our wheel back on. Watch that keyway, there we go. She's in and on. Take our pin, lock it in place, boom. Last step, spray the pin down to protect it. We're gonna take the snowblower and tip it back down. There we go. While I had this snowblower tipped in the service position, I purposely put some paper towels there to see if any oil would leak out from the tube. Nothing. Now here's some tips to help you out with this whole procedure. If you don't necessarily want to tip the snowblower up into the service position, if you have a car jack low enough, what you can do is slide it underneath, jack it up a few inches, and that should allow you just enough space to pull the wheel off. One important piece though, you may want to take a board and put it on top of the car jack before you slide it underneath because you don't want to bend the belly pan. You could also back the snowblower up onto a couple blocks of wood. Again, all you need to do is get the wheels up high enough so you can take them off. Now what if your wheels just aren't coming off? Start praying. Well, here are a few things I've done in the past with varying levels of success. Perhaps one of these methods could help you out. If your wheels are really stuck on, what you could do is spray them down heavily with PB Blaster. This was sent to us by our good friends over at Blaster Products. Thank you very much. Spray it down heavily, let it soak overnight, and keep in mind, this is a product that needs time to do its job. Let it soak, come back the next day, give it a few taps with a hammer, and it should come free. The next thing you could try is torching it. Heating that wheel up should create some expansion and allow it to break free from the axle. Be careful using heat though, it could ruin any paint and it could ignite any gas nearby. Keep anything flammable far away and it may free it up for you. And one way to kick this a nickel is right after heating it up, to dump some ice water on it. The rapid expansion and contraction could help break the bond. I've done this a few times before and it's actually kind of cool because you hear this loud clink when the metal bonds break. Isn't science fun? Now, worst case scenario, you may have to take the belly pan off and cut the axle in half. Sell it for parts. At that point, you may want to start making some future snowblower plans. Now, what about anti-seize? Is that the only option? No, the manual actually calls for grease, but they don't specify what kind to use. Come on, Aarons, I thought you were better than that. I have used red and tacky grease with success, marine grease, and I've even used fluid film. If you're gonna use any of these, be sure to pop the wheels off at least once a season to see how it's holding up. The cool thing about anti-seize is I coated it on my last snowblower years ago, let three years go by, took the wheels off, and I found that it was still in place, still doing its job. The wheels slid right off. That made my repairs a lot easier to do. Now, if you're interested in getting underneath the belly pan to loop things up and to inspect how your friction disc is doing, then check out the video I'll have linked down below on that procedure. It'll walk you through everything to help keep your machine moving. For more cool garage gear content, click or tap the screen right here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the garage.